Now then, ladies and gents, thank you for joining me. That just sounds terrible, that's terrible. I wanted to talk today about a few little tips, a little trick that I've got in editing my Instagram photos, especially when I'm doing black and white. When you do black and white, if you edit your, your photos in Lightroom or something similar, there's a black and white button and you think, oh, black and white, click the black and white button, job done. Yes, you can do that. Yes, there is a place for that. That is not what I do. So I just wanted to go into a little bit about what I do, why I do it, and what the different effect is when you use this particular method. So I think that covers it. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you right now. We're going to jump straight in. Step. So I wanted to show you the difference and why I don't use the black and white button. So uh, I've got a couple of images put together here. First of all, this one that seems very colourful. Let's do the colourish one. Let's see what happens when we go into black and white. Now, now if you decided that you wanted to do a black and white image, the temptation would be to go up here and click on black and white. Job done, easy peasy, simple pimple. But the thing is, one of the things that you can do is you can still tweak the white balance slider here with temperature and if you cool it down you see how it, it changes the it doesn't change the color but it changes how the black and white is interpreted from the color um, and this is this might be anecdotal I don't know whether it's actually true but people have told me that film black and white film is actually more sensitive to the blue end of the spectrum so by moving everything towards the blue end you get a more true representation of black and white film if that's what you're going for now the thing is looking at that that looks absolutely terrible because it's completely blown out and doesn't necessarily make sense being black and white because um, it's nice and green so what I do rather than clicking the black and white button I use the saturation slider and drag that completely all the way down then when I go into the white balance and bring the blue down, uh, bring the blue up, sorry, cool the image down. It looks better. Let me just take a take a snapshot of this. Desat. So this is the desaturated version with the white balance moved all the way to the blue end. Right, let's reset that, reset that. Now if we go to the black and white and do the same thing, it looks completely different. So there's the black and white, white balance sent down to the, the blue end. There's the desaturated version. Now the the highlight roll off is so much better on that version than on that version. That just seems very, very harsh. You can see in the histogram up at the top, everything's moved up to the right hand edge and there's this big cliff at the right hand end. The desaturated version, you've got this spread but it nicely rolls off into the highlights at the top and there's no clipping at all. Uh, I don't think there's any clipping on either of them. No, there's no clipping on either of them. So, this is what I do for my black and whites. I move everything to the blue. You can still adjust it. See, if I bring that back to where it was, it seems quite dark. Like, uh, if, even if I move it up to the yellow end. Now it's starting to blow out more. That seems brighter than when I go down to the blue end. Well, I, with it being a green image, I'm... I think there's more yellow in the image, so it's uh, moving higher up, but you could probably get it very similar. So yeah, so that's what I do when I do my black and white images. I use the saturation slider and send it all the way down to negative 100 or 0, whichever. And then I move the white balance all the way to the blue end because of this anecdotal thing that people have told me that a black and white film is more sensitive to blue. Let's try a different one. So it, here's, the, here's the, once again the difference between the two. That's my version. That's using the black and white slider. Now what if you left the white balance where it was for the black and white? So this is using the black and white. Reset that. Right.
just darker. And if you move it up. just different it just looks different I uh, it probably works different on different images so let's see if we can find a different image use this one this one looks like it could be lend itself more to black and white because it's very gray already so first of all I'll do the temptation which is to go black and white in fact let's save that one as it is straight black and white then clipped anyway so it's not clipping anything extra but now in black and white mode if I move it all the way to the blue end the sky's just gone flat and grey so I'll move, I won't move it as far down the blue end just so there's still some shades in the sky okay so that is my blued. Okay, so let's uh, reset that. Now, my version, I go to the saturation slider, take it all the way down to zero, and then I generally move this all the way down to the blue end. You see, there's still detail in the sky. So, let's get rid of that. Right, so that's my version. The straight black and white is a bit darker in these. Uh, in the in the shadows, it are a bit darker, so it's a bit more. It's just an aesthetic. It's just a bit brighter in there. Although there is a bit more detail in the sky, with the straight black and white. But that's because everything's darker. So if I was to take my version, uh, put my blacks up there a bit, and just drop it down a tad. It's not far away. See, so you, you can get the, you can get them fairly similar. I think it's just quicker, and you end up with more control rather than using the black and white clicky button. See, the black and white straight out. Just click the black and white button. It it's darker than the rest. There's still detail in the sky, but the, you're losing it in the uh, in the shadow detail here. If you move it to the blue, if you start moving the white balance to the blue end with the black and white pressed, you start to brighten it up and it brings out a bit more in here. But when I do desaturated version, there's more brought out in here. And um, even if I drop the exposure there, it can get pretty close. So that is what I do. I take the saturation all the way down. I take the white balance all the way to the blue end and it generally keeps more of the information and I've still got control over lots of the image I think the, you lose quite a bit when you click the the black and white button um, if you want to just use it straight out and just go boom black and white done fine then yeah of course that's quicker but if you want to then go into your image and start giving yourself the, the tone curve that you want you know, you can bring up those shadows again and uh, pull down some of your mids, blow out some of your highlights, that kind of thing. You you st you end up you've got more information to begin with. So, just a tip: rather than just using the black and white button, use the saturation, and you can still get a bit more of a filmic look. Anecdotally, a bit more of a filmic look using the white balance by moving it towards the blue end. So that is that. Okay guys, there you are, that is what I do, using the saturation slider rather than the black and white button. People are going to say, yeah, you can tweak that other one and get it to look like that, and yeah, you can tweak that one to get it to look like that. You can tweak anything, these are raw images, this is Lightroom, you can tweak everything to make it look how you want. This is the way that I do it because I feel I get more control over the image, and I can tweak it a little bit more, and it's, it's what I do for my personal style, and that is how my style works. So... Just wanted to share that one with you. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I'm going to try and do more of these. So if you want to stick around, if you find any of these interesting, please subscribe or follow me on Instagram. Um, 
I'm pretty much there all the time on Instagram, so give us a follow, give us a comment on there, and let's have a chat. How do you do your black and whites? Do you try and emulate film? Do you want to just keep it digital? Interested to find out, so let me know in the comments below. That's it. I've been Jack. This is Jacked Content. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ta-ra. Oh, I love a flow. I just can't.